bells of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol. Crafters, this is Colette. Today I'd love to share with you my latest explosion, or as I call them, drop down boxes. Now I've made loads of these over the last few years. Um, love them all. They're super beautiful. They have beautiful surprises inside and they're not too hard to make either. What I think makes this particular box super special is the gorgeous papers that I've actually chosen to decorate it with. And those papers are from the Frosted collection from Kaisercraft. Now, this particular collection has lots of papers and embellishments as usual, but I chose to actually use the collection pack. Now, the collection pack is probably the most economical way to buy your papers, and it's certainly great for this particular project. You get 12 sheets of paper, so there's lots of papers. There are six designs. So you have double-sided papers as well. And you also get a sticker sheet. And on the sticker sheet, you've got lots of embellishments, beautiful words and beautiful borders, and even some snowflakes that you can use on this particular project. You know, this um, box, I, I, I do, I absolutely love this box. And, and I've decided I love it so much. It's not going to be given away. I'm going to keep it all to myself. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is just do a few more things for myself on this box. I'm going to choose to keep this as my Christmas spirit box. So on the 1st of December, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to pop that on display. And I'm going to have in my little concertina tag boxes here, um, 24 different tags made up. And they're going to be decorated in keeping with my design. And on the back, I'm going to attach a typed up activity that um, signifies Christmas or, you know, just gets me into that Christmas spirit. So, for example, I might have go Christmas shopping on one of them. On another one, I might have make plum puddings. On another one, I might have put a gift under the giving tree. So there's going to be 25 activities and each day in December, I'm going to come to my Christmas spirit box. I'm going to select a tag and I'm going to do the activity on that particular day. And once I've finished, I'm going to place that tag into a little jar beside. And that's going to help me get into that wonderful Christmas spirit that I love so much much. So I'm going to show you how to make this particular box. Now I'm not going to go through step by step because it does take a bit of time but I'm going to show you all the techniques and sizes and measurements that you need 
so you can confidently create this project yourself. And whether you decide to keep this as your spirit box or whether you decide to give this to your parents, maybe with little tags and photographs from your children to their grandparents in the actual pockets to make it special, it's entirely up to you. So let's get started. Now for the actual drop down sections, we need to have three pieces of card and the card that I've chosen to use on my box was called Blue Haze and that's from Kaisercraft. I felt that colour coordinated beautifully with that frosted collection. Now for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to do this in white cardstock. Um, now what we need to do for our largest drop down box is we need to create um, a, a section which is 12 inches by 12 inches. So I'm going to now score that 12 by 12 inch piece of cardstock at 4 inches into my soap and at 8 inches. Feel how beautifully this flows when you actually go into the soap. I'm going to rotate that and I'm scoring again 4 inches and 8 inches. I'm then going to pop my scoreboard away for now and grab my paper trimmer. What we now need to do, you can see we've got a bit of a grid happening here, we need to cut out these corner sections. Now you can do that with scissors, um, with your paper trimmer as I am, um, even with a craft knife, so whichever way you want to do it. So we're taking out those corner sections. Now these corner sections, put aside, they can be used later or to mat some of the pieces in your box. What we are left with is this cross and this is what will form our particular um, drop box, so that's the largest. Now we need to create the middle size and for the middle size we need to start off with a piece of cardstock that is 11 and a quarter inches by 11 and a quarter inches. And we need to score that piece at three and three quarters and seven and a half. And we're going to rotate that and score again, just like before, at three and three quarters and seven and a half. And we're going to take away the four corner sections. Our third drop down, the smallest of the little drop downs, we need to start off with a piece of cardstock that is ten and a half inches by ten and a half inches. This piece we're going to score at three and a half and seven inches. We're going to rotate it and score again at three and a half and seven inches and then we're going to take out the four corner sections. So what we end up with is three kind of crosses and you can see all slightly uh, different sizes. So the small, the medium and the large. So now we've got our boxes, we need to go ahead and decorate these. Now for the largest of the boxes, you go ahead from your paper collection and choose one of the sheets and you're going to cover the whole of the outer sections in the same design more or less the same design, I think looks nice. And you're just gonna cut it just fractionally smaller so you have a little bit of that beautiful border showing and you're going to cover that. Once they're covered, um, you can then do the back side of this one. But let me just point out about the covering. The reason why I like to leave a little rim, so you can see the original blue card, top and bottom, is that it doesn't interfere with the scoring. So you must make sure that you're not on that score line, in fact you're before it. So that's why you want to leave a little bit of the original card showing all the way around. So we've covered the inside section. I'm now going to flip that over 
and this will be what we see on the outside of our box. Now you can choose whichever you like to do, but remember this is going to be um, the one that's seen on the box. Now I used um, for my outside from that paper collection, if I can put my hands on it, this beautiful Christmas tree one, which is here, isn't that gorgeous? Um, and that's called Wintery, and that's in that paper collection. And you can see I've used the big section of the tree, and this is going to be the front of my box. And then I've continued to use that same piece of paper and all four sides. And remember, you can still see a little bit of the blue on the outside, so my squares are cut just slightly smaller. So we've now done the outside and the inside. The next thing that we're going to do is on the inside, we're going to go ahead and give it a bit of a, a second decoration. And what I have chosen to do on the inside of the largest drop box are these very cute little pockets. Now I've made them deep, they're not little flat pockets. They're deep because you can put lots of different things in there, gift vouchers, photographs, my spirit messages, whatever you want to. So we're making them deep. So let me show you how I've made those little pockets. Now for my pockets, I've cut a piece of patterned paper and that patterned paper has been cut to four inches by two and a quarter inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to score these at the following. I'm scoring at a quarter of an inch half an inch, three and a half inches, and three and three quarter inches. Now I've just noticed actually my piece of paper here is slightly bigger than four inches so I'm just going to chop that little piece off. So four inches. Okay, that looks correct now. So just to recap there, I've got a piece of paper here which is um, four inches by two and a half inches and I've scored this at quarter of an inch, half an inch, three and a half inches and three and three quarter inches. And now I'm going to rotate that one way and I'm going to score this um, again at um, quarter of an inch and half an inch. I'm not going to do any more scoring on the long side. So once I've done that, I can go ahead and grab my bone folder and fold these. Now, the very first score line is going to be a mountain fold. And the second one is going to be a valley fold. So you've got like a little bit of a concertina happening there. So valley, mountain. Repeat on the other side. So mountain, <laughs> valley. Okay, opening it up and repeat on the bottom. The first one is the mountain. And then we fold the second one up to be the valley. All right. Now what we need to do is to get rid of the excess corners. All right. So you can see here I've got... Eight, sorry, four tiny little squares. I need to get rid of them. Pull that away. And the same on the other side. Get rid of those tiny four corners. So we end up with something that looks like that. Now we can go ahead and we can put the bottom one up and the top one. Now what we have to do, we've got a, a double up here on the corner. So I'm going to get my scissors, go in through there to the end, and this little bit here is excess. I'm going to chop that away, just to repeat that over here. So the bottom goes down first, this lays over the top, and that shows me where my excess is. So in with my scissors, chopping up where the excess is, cutting off that little bit there. So now I'm left with a really nice little pocket that's nice and large and a great size and can expand quite nicely. I'm going to put some of my red extra strong double-sided tape on this piece 
this piece and this piece and then that will get stuck down onto my box like that. So I've got four little pockets on each of the inside section of the largest drop box and those pockets can be different and then you can have a bit of fun decorating them. I've used a few bits from the Frosted Collectibles collection here, There's things from the sticker sheets. Oh this was from the sticker sheet but this this is um, something just a little little tip here. I used um, this particular one. Now this particular one was bigger than my pocket, so it's stuck over the top, but it's all sticky. So what I do is I just have oh, some talcum powder, which I dub my finger in, and I just wipe it on the back. So that now is no longer sticky, so when I stick that down, only the bottom section will stick, and not the top, because that's not sticky anymore. So talcum powder is a great little friend to get rid of adhesive strips. Okay, so that's the pockets. Largest drop box, we've got the beautiful exterior which is going to be the front of the box on the back and on the inside we've got our bases covered and we've made four little pockets that we've decorated with our beautiful frosted collection. So with the next size pockets, which is the middle size one, again I simply covered each of the four squares, you don't need to cover the centre because you're not going to see it. And I covered the back section too. I left the back pretty plain, just the paper I, I did that initial cover with. But on the inside, I just took some little quotes. Um, I matted them in some of the offcuts of that beautiful blue haze cardstock. And I just simply put those down. Now one of the other things that you'll notice are these little bars. Now, this is something that I like to include in these drop-down boxes because when, when the box drops, typically it will just go flat, blah, you know, like a bad hair day. I like them to, to just stay raised a little bit. And by popping in about two mils worth of double-sided tape, you know, use your foam tape. Um, and sometimes you might need to do two or three layers because you want a little bit of height. And then I've just covered it in a tiny strip of patterned paper from the Frosted Collection. And I've done that on the biggest and on the second boxes. And that enables them just to stay raised up a little bit. Obviously on the smallest box, you won't see those there. Now on the smallest box, it's a case of decorating um, all these sections here. This section in the middle, um, the um, outside sections with pretty paper and then you can see what I've done is I've cut some of the beautiful words that you'll find on, in this collection and I've used some of the stickers to kind of decorate that a little bit more. And on the back, just left those plain. The paper's beautiful enough I thought. Okay, so once we've got our three boxes um, decorated, what we can then do is start to join them together. So just folding them in, okay, just again, just a nice burnish. What I'll then do is do that to all of them, and then simply I will put some tape on the back, back of this, and I'm going to sit the second largest in there like that. And the smallest one, I'm going to put some tape again on the back here and I'm going to sit that inside. Now I do like to use that really extra tacky, extra strong red tape. Any of these mechanism boxes and stuff like that where you want extra sticking power, go for this. Alright, so basically that's our box formed and decorated except for the centre section. So I'm now going to show you how I've done that centre section. Okay, so the center section consists of a little um, platform. I've got a little punched out gate around the platform. I've got a couple of gorgeous deers and of course I've got my Christmas tree. So let's start off and show you how I made that little platform. I think it's nice in the center of these drop down cards when things are raised up a little bit. 
So what I've got here is a piece of card and that card is, sorry not card, it's pattern paper and that measures two and a half inches square and I'm simply going to score that at half an inch all the way around on all four sides scoring at half an inch. So that's scored now half an inch all the way around. And what I'm now going to do is just to make a few cuts. So I'm just going to cut on that score line up to where it meets the previous one. I'm turning and cutting. I'm turning and cutting. I'm turning and cutting. It really doesn't matter if you, if you don't kind of turn them. It really doesn't matter at all. Then I'm just going to fold these back on that score line. And then what I'm going to do, these little flappy pieces, I'm going to, to um, fold those in. Flappy piece in, flappy piece in, flappy piece in. And on the correct side, I'm going to put some adhesive on those little flappy bits. And then simply what I will do, I will close that up like that, like that, okay, like that, and like that. So you end up with a little, little kind of a platform. And then all I've done with some strong glue is to put some strong glue along here and then stuck it down onto my card. Now you're not going to see a lot of that platform. And don't worry if some of the glue squishes out because you'll see I found some very pretty little white bauble ribbon um, just in, in a $2 um, shop and I've just stuck that down to cover any messes but that was done after I put the punched border. So my little gate, I just basically used a Martha Stewart punch here. Um, you, there's lots of dies on the market with, with little fences and gates, so you could use anything you like there. Um, and then I drew my attention to my Christmas tree. tree. I just started off with a piece of pattern paper that measures four inches by four inches, and on one of the sides I put some red tape. Now I'm not going to remove the backing of that tape just yet. I want to shape it. And it's simply a case of putting it um, in a diamond shape um, in front of you and then just shaping it into like a cone. Just something like, something like that is good. Into a cone shape. Once you've got that cone shape done for the first time, what you can then do is you can then take away your backing tape And then you can go ahead and just stick that down. A little bit fiddly. Sorry, I was doing that off the screen there. Sometimes some holding things close to you makes it easier in theory. So that's basically what I've done for my tree. I then simply went ahead at the bottom and just chopped off the excess. A little bit crude, I know, but it, it works beautifully. So could be a wizard's hat, I guess, but this one's going to be a Christmas tree. So once I've done that, I went ahead and started to stick lots and lots of little um, ferns. Now I use the Martha Stewart branch punch, but there's this, this um, might be a bit tricky to get hold of. So I just literally punched out a fern, put a bit of glue on the back, and then started laying them all up one on top of each other to create this beautiful little tree here. Now you could use any kind of a leaf die. You could freehand cut little pieces. Um, Kaiser Craft have got a couple of things that would work beautifully. There's this die here, which is called the Holly Branch, and you can actually subcut that, and you can get a whole number of cuts. And I love love this one from Kaiser Craft here. This is the um, Christmas foliage, the mini Christmas foliage, and there's lots of little leaves and things that you could you could die cut, chop up, and just lay them on top of each other. Um, and that would also look pretty. So once I've got the tree done, just as I did with my platform, glue on the bottom, and then just sticking it down in place. And then finishing it off with a pretty little star on top. Now, that's the basis of it done. Now you can see on my tree, I've actually decorated it with these tiny, tiny little baubles. And to do that, I've actually used um, some Pontura paint. Um, now Pontura paint is um, 
it's a technique for card making and it's really really very good not not too expensive it's a bit thicker than um, liquid pearls so it gives you those little tiny circle, circular little baubles just perfect for my tree and I use a blue and a white you could use liquid pearls um, I also use little drops of kinder glitz, the clear kinder glitz on top of that as well um, and that just gave it a little bit more interest now for the lid um, I of course continued using the blue haze from Kaiser Craft but I'm just using it in white for the video purposes and I've cut it to seven and a quarter inches by seven and a quarter inches and then I have gone ahead and I've scored it on all sides at one and a half inches Okay, and I'm going to be using the same technique that we used for the little platform we made earlier. I'm just simply going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut up to that first score line, rotate it, cut, rotate it, cut, rotate, and the final cut. Then I am going to um, fold it folding and folding now on these little corner bits just as before just pushing them all back now this would be the right side facing up I'm just going to use my glue runner, but I would ordinarily use the um, the red tape for this. But I just want to do it nice and quickly for the video. And I'm going to then close these up. Now I'm putting my finger here because I don't want it to go over. I want it to be a nice join, and I'm going to do that on all of the all of the sections to form my lid. So that's the lid all ready to be decorated for my box. Now in terms of the decoration, what I actually did is I used a special piece of paper which was not in the pack, it's one of the, the Kaiser Craft specialist papers and this is called Blizzard and you can see it's, it's foiled, it looks beautiful. And what I did is I, I cut away the edges, the centre bit I covered the top of the box width, this bit here, making it just slightly smaller as before. And then with these edges here, I did the shorter sections on the two sides and just centered it so you can see how that fits in with that. And I repeated that on the other side and then I used the longer sections on the front bits and I just stuck those down and you can see if I just pull this up I did it in, in just section by section snipping off at the corners where it was too long and then um, what I did is I then started to do a beautiful flower cluster on top very simple what I did is I put a little bit of glue down scrunched up some cheesecloth to give me a bit of height and texture plopped that down and then I took some of the glorious Kaiser Craft paper blooms and stuck those into positions and then I used the mini foliage die and I cut um, a pass of those in silver and you can see all the glorious shapes love that little acorn there and you can see that beautiful little acorn is just sitting here proudly Jingle bells, I found a few jingle bells in my stash so I popped those in and you'll notice I've got a couple of little splashes of red a bit out of the ordinary but I just love how that's kind of just thrown in a little bit eclectic there but it looks lovely so once I've done all that I then wanted to tone it down, frost it up, make it look a little bit better and I find that with a lot of mists they're very iridescent but I wanted a bit more of a a kind of a frostier hit. So what I did is I took one of the Kaiser Craft empty bottles and I put a squeeze of white acrylic paint from Kaiser Craft in there. I added some water, shook it up and then when I spritzed it on it came out really white and frosty which is what I wanted. While that was still all wet I sprinkled on some glitter 
and um, that really finished off that top bit and of course fixed it with the fixative spray. You've seen me do that before in many of my videos. And you'll notice at the very front of the box I put this glorious, super cute little uh, brass um, knob and Kaisercraft do a whole range of lovely metal things you know from draw labels to all sorts and th and these are the little knobs I just simply put a strong glue on, on the end and I just glued it in position okay so that's all ready to go um, and there's one tiny little bit that I didn't show you and that was my gorgeous little reindeer again there from Kaiser Craft and, and I used that white spray that I made see how beautiful and white they are and then I sprinkled them with glitter as well and I just put a little bit of glue on their feet and they're standing up there very proudly so yes you know this isn't a, a quickie little project it, it does take a little bit of making but what an achievement when you've made something so beautiful um, and it will make the most precious gift for someone that would come out year after year I am sure and, and for me, I think this will come out year after year as well. And I'm really looking forward to thinking of my 24 beautiful little tags that I'm going to put in here to help me create the spirit of Christmas. So thank you so much for watching. My name's Colette. Um, as always, you can uh, click on the uh, subscribe button, which should be just down here somewhere, and look at my other YouTube tutorials. Um, and leave me some feedback to tell me how you go with this little box. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.